Woo, this is big. So Sora was announced yesterday by OpenAI, and I will say Sora and OpenAI is not the problem. We are, right? And, and I'll explain what I mean by that as this video goes on. And so let's talk about what Sora is and its capabilities. Let's talk about the reception so far, and then let's talk about potential downsides to this. Okay, so let's go directly to the website and talk about what this is. Now, they categorize this as video generation models as world simulators. So let's oversimplify this. It's based on putting in a prompt and getting out an asset. Now to this point, we've had create you know creatives uh assets that have come out of this we've had you know pictures and and different things like that we've had writing samples we've had um projects we've had calendars created we've had all different types of things that we've used these language models to create assets now video has been around so it, you've been able to create video from an asset but we have not been able to do it to a photorealistic capability like Sora is going to be able to do to this point. And so looking at their website, as, as far as the information that they've put out for the public to view, um, it's extremely impressive to be able to put in a prompt and come out with something as dazzling as this is amazing. Now, I won't go into all of the details. There's going to be a lot of information, a lot of different content creators that's going to talk to you about what this is and so i would implore that you go out and and watch as much as you want as much as you can stomach um if this is a topic that is of interest of you to you but the flat out ability to create something so realistic um and and be something that can substitute in for the real thing is fascinating here i mean let's just stop right here on this one a woman wearing blue jeans and a white t-shirt taking a pleasant stroll in Antarctica during a beautiful sunset. Now, if I was to go boom and then keep scrolling, was that enough time to realize that it was not real? What about now? So it's very, very interesting um, the way that this can create photorealistic realities because it's a world generator is what it is. And it, you can take that, that prompt and change it over and over and get the expected outcome or the outcome that you're looking for. This is something that a creator can use. I mean, I'm writing, I, 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 I'm writing a book, right? And so if I was to be like, man, what would my, what would my main character look like? What would this world look like of my main character? What, you know, what would the secondary character look like? How would, you know, what would the city look like that I'm describing? What would the, and then I'll be able to have these video visuals to determine if, if the book is good, right? As I create it, as I create it, I have these visual cues that can help me fine tune the book, um, fine tune the scenario and potential, you know, script for a later movie and blah, blah, blah. I think that, you know, just that scenario alone can tell you how this technology will help not replace, but help content creators. Okay, so what is my fear with this new technology? I'll, I'll say this, I was in a conversation recently and someone asked me, what is the biggest technology to be released in recent years? And what is the worst technology to be released in recent years? And my answer to that was the same, social media. Social media has been a bright spot for so many people, creativity, the ability to display your, your creativity, to express yourself as an artist, to learn about new things that you've never learned about before, to see new things that you've never seen before, connect with people all around the world, create bonds that would not exist if social media did not exist. But at the same time, it's been one of the most negative plights on society to exist. I've seen in that same time frame people take out cameras to watch people get beat to a pulp as opposed to take out their phone to call the police to help those folks. I've seen innocence be removed from younger children because they scrolled too far and there was not a warning label on the content that they were viewing and there's not any way to police what people post with the freedom of choice when managing your own social media content and profile. And so with that being said, this technology is frighteningly fascinating because you have the ability to create a world that does not exist with the typing with, you know, with a prompt. I can prompt 
you know, sunny skies, pan from left to right while adding a 360 with a 35 millimeter lens, a mountainous valley, people smiling and laughing with sun, sunlight shining and everybody having a good time at a festival, blah, blah, blah. I can do all those good things. And on the flip side, I can create propaganda. I can create um, fake um, scenarios that used to sway opinion and things like that. I think that that is something that we have to be cognizant of and be willing to admit that to every upside, there's an equally drastic downside to a technology like this. Thank you for listening to my ramble. There is a lot to think through here. There's, there's so many implications, positive as well as negative in regards to this technology. I think the technology, I wanna give my personal opinion, I think this technology is fascinating. I think it's beautiful. I think it creates opportunities for good. And it's because I'm a positive person, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a positive person and I, I, call, I consider myself a good person, honest and transparent person. So I think this technology is phenomenal and I think it's going to open the door for journeys that we have not been able to take to this point. Um, and being realistic and an honest and transparent person, I think it's going to create opportunities for negativity that we have not seen to this point as well. And so I think it will be really important on how this is handled going forward with this being a private, um, with this being a privately owned technology or entity underneath OpenAI. Uh, it's not government based. Um, so it, you know, this, it's hard to say there should be guardrails of someone else's creation in the private sector. Um, so it's interesting to see what's going to happen with this. You know, I think about things like the F-22 Raptor was originally commissioned publicly, not publicly, but 1997 was the first one that was created and flown at Dobbins Air Force Base here in Georgia, 1997. It didn't get commissioned to a mission until 2014. And in 2022, it was retired and never fought in a war against other pilots. And it's the most advanced plane that we know of that's ever been created in the military, replaced by the, I believe, F-35, more budget-friendly F-35. But with that being said, that technology existed for 20-something years before it actually saw a mission. So. It's just interesting to think that how long has technology like this been around? What's actually available versus what we're seeing? And so that's the thought I'll leave you on because I'm a nerd and that's kind of the rabbit holes that I go down. So let's go down that rabbit hole together. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's content, consider subscribing and joining the Cozy Coalition below. And as always, stay cozy in that crazy world and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.